Hey everyone, so we're going to be exploring a Rexin 1 and a Rexin 2 and the paper along with it. The comparison of a Rexin 1 and 2 ligand binding modes using expert crystallography and computational analysis. Yeah, just wanted to say thank you to the authors. So we're going to be exploring the binding pocket right there. Um, and, and that's going to be the same as what we have over here in the protein structure. So yeah, well, let's dig in and let's actually analyze the structures. Uh, Traditionally, it's been very hard to get X-ray crystal structures of GPCRs. That's the type of protein that Daniel's going to tell us about, uh, the Rexins or GPCRs. And over the last several years, there's been a lot of improvements in how to do it. And Heptaris has been a real leader in being able to do a lot of crystal structures of GPCRs. And in this paper, they report 14 different crystal structures of a Rexin, either a Rexin 1 or a Rexin 2, with a uh, small molecule. So really an exciting paper. Right. So I'm going to discuss GPCRs uh, broadly a little bit. You know, GPCRs are integral membrane proteins. And uh, in terms of structure, they are characterized by an extracellular N terminus, followed by seven transmembrane helices. Uh, they are connected to three intracellular loops and three extracellular loops. And finally, uh, an intracellular C-terminus as well. GPCRs they represent the largest family of druggable targets in the human genome. And actually, about a third of current FDA-approved drugs are target GPCRs. That's how important they are. Um, now, the, you know, the potential of, of GPCRs as targets for drug discovery is well recognized, but it's always been a challenge to gain structural information on GPCRs uh, which are normally membrane bound, and that's why they're hard to crystallize. They're, they're pretty unstable. So, um, <clears throat> what Sose so Heptaris has developed is this platform called STAR, which is stabilizing uh, receptors, uh, STAR technology that enables GPCRs to be worked on in solution uh, through some uh, mutations that allows the use to uh, structure based drug discovery technologies and the discovery of novel drugs addressing this important set of uh, targets. Um, Heptaris is deploying this technology to generate small molecule drugs against uh, currently difficult GPCR targets in different disease areas. In this case, it's about uh, arousal, right? And insomnia and, th and th things like that, right, Mike? That's right. That's right. So the, the orexin system is, uh, is in the brain and the orexin peptides mediate a lot of behavior, arousal, wakefulness, and, and there are actually mutations in the system that lead to the condition called narcolepsy, where people will fall asleep quickly and, and unexpectedly, you know, at times when they don't want to fall asleep. And so people have known for quite a while now that the orexin system might be useful for medicines, both to treat narcolepsy, but going the other way with antagonists, maybe to treat insomnia in conditions where people can't sleep. And so the drug we're going to be looking at today here in, in the orexin receptor is called suvorexin. It's actually a drug developed by Merck for insomnia. It's on the market now. And there are other similar drugs uh, that are in the clinic or coming to market. Suvorexin is interesting because it binds well to both the orexin-1 receptor and the orexin-2 receptor. You know, the great thing in nanom is you can grab the protein and make that binding pocket really large, and we can just come right inside the seven transmembrane region here and see the ligand. And so suvorexin has what's called a horse, horseshoe shape, as Steve can show us. And it actually hydrogen, it actually does pi stacking with itself, the two aromatic rings right above each other. So it fits nicely there. But I think what's really interesting about the orexin receptor is most of the important contacts are not polar interactions, they're not hydrogen bonds, but they're, they're really hydrophobic interactions. There's really four sort of lipophilic domains uh, here. Uh, that you can see in yellow along the surface of the protein. And all of these antagonists really uh, like to find those hydrophobic regions. And you can see back here behind Steve, it's bright yellow there. And you can see back in here, it's bright yellow. And then up here uh, above is also bright yellow. So um, both orexin one and orexin two 
are very similar in here. They only differ by two amino acids, amino acids with relatively small changes, um, an alanine to a threonine and a serine to a threonine, which is a very small change. Otherwise, they're the same. So suvorexin and most of the early uh, erexin antagonists are dual acting uh, receptor antagonists. Um, they, they, and they block both erexin 1 and erexin 2, but people have been able to make selective ones, even though the pockets are very similar. And what's interesting in the Heptari's paper that we're reading today is they talk about uh, the selective molecule being able to trap an unhappy water uh, over in the domain here. So, so you know, a, a water doesn't need to be in here in a hydrophobic domain. And so if a ligand traps it there, it's going to be a lot less active. Uh, it's going to pay a high energy price for binding there with that unhappy water. Uh, did you guys want to look at those mutations or differences? Or Do you want to overlay erection 1 and erection 2? You yeah. see right here is one of the key differences. Uh, this is just a serine and a threonine. So it only differs by this methyl group here. And yet this is really important for selectivity for the selective ligands. Again, suvorexin is active in both of you know, in, in both of these receptors, but the selective ligand uh, can tell the difference between these two. And it's not because it makes it a hydrogen bond with, with either one of these, but it's because the threonine, which is just a little bit larger, helps displace uh, what is an, an unhappy water in erexin 1 um, that, that gets trapped by the selective compound. Yeah, I used the uh, the sequence menu to actually highlight all of the uh, the differences um, that were seen here. And so, if you see anything in orange, it means that it it could have a uh, difference. So, if you're looking at the mutants, yeah, I think that's the that's the other one in the pocket right there. Uh, yeah, and thanks again to the Sose Heptaris team for you know exploring the crystal structures uh, that we have here. And we hope that, you know, these medicines actually make it to the, to the clinic and make it beyond the clinic and hopefully impact somebody's life someday. So, yeah, thanks, Mike and Daniel, for joining us. And we'll see you next Thank time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.